significance of Makar Sankranti and even in uh, Bhagavad Gita we have learnt it many times that uh, uh, year is in Uttarayan and Dakshinayan. So there is a great significance uh, of Makar Sankranti. Uh, but we will not go into that because today's class is too good. Uh, <laughs> it's actually going from you know the most material aspects of spiritual practice to the most sublime aspects of spiritual practice and Bhagwan is very beautifully giving us the technique of how you can reach yourself and what is the real meaning of moksha. So I don't want to waste any time uh, discussing anything else. So let us chant first. Okay, today we chant from Shlok 10 to 25. Adhyay 6, okay? Vasudeva sutam devam kansachanura mardanam devaki paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Om Shri Paramatmane Namaha Atha Shashto Dhyayaha Shri Bhagavan Kuvacha Yogi Yunjita Sahaja 
सततम Excuse me. 
my uh, throat. We are on Adhyay 6, right? And last time we recalled that the name of the Adhyay is Atma Sanyam Yog, right? Union with the divine through the restraint of the BMI. Atma, not in as in Atma, soul, but Atma as in the BMI. Because we, is, we remember that Atma can be used in many ways in Sanskrit. It is also called Dhyan Yoga. Because in this Adhyay, the technique of Dhyan is given to us. Also, we discussed that there are many kinds of Dhyan that we can do depending on the purpose for which we are practicing meditation. But in this Adhyay, when they are talking about Dhyan, it is the method of doing Dhyan, of meditating for the purpose of self-realization, right? <coughs> Just like when we want to learn something, for some purpose, we need to know the technique. We need to have some skills, we need to have some knowledge about the subject. So, I was thinking, when we are learning to meditate with the techniques given in this Adhyay, it is very similar to learning to drive a car. Okay, how many of you have learned to drive a car? So, almost everyone. So, if you have learned to drive a car, you will be able to learn to meditate also. So let us see the similarity between meditating and driving a car. So if you will see in Shlok 10 for example, what did they say? If you want to meditate, practice meditation in seclusion. Means in a isolated spot if you want to meditate. You don't want to learn to meditate in the bazaar. You don't want to learn to meditate in the railway station because there will be a lot of disturbance. In the same way, if you are learning to drive a car, you will not start at Hutatma Chok. <laughs> you might go on worldly sea face, but now even worldly sea face. I think very few places are left for newcomers to learn driving. But you will have to find one road which is relatively uh, or find a time in the day which is uh, where the roads are not very crowded. So the same thing for meditation, find a place where you are learning to meditate. Once you have achieved meditation practice, then you can meditate in any place. In the railway station also, in the market also. But when you are learning, because now he is giving instructions to Arjun for learning to meditate. <coughs> then he says, he meaning who? Bhagwan Krishna. He says you must control your mind and your body in the same shloka. Control the mind and the body. Achha. When you are doing dhyana also, you have to control your mind and body. You have to control the body by sitting in an asana where your legs are not dangling, where the legs are not moving around, hands are not scratching your head and scratching your back. You are controlling your body as well as controlling the mind. Then he also says when you are meditating, same shloka, Free from desires. This is the third instruction. Free from desires. So obviously when you are learning to drive, then also your focus should not be, I want to eat ice cream, I want a bubble gum, I want to go to the movies. There also your mind should be free from desires. Then next shloka comes, how, when, how should you be seated? He says seat, your asana should be clean. The asana should be clean. And it should not be too high, nor it should be too low. So when you learn to drive, think about the days when you first learn to drive. You have to adjust your seat. It had not to be too close to the pedals and not so far that your foot doesn't reach the accelerator or the brake. It should not be too high or too low. Most cars don't have a Sanjay's car. Has it. You can go up and down also. This car has a lot of adjustments to the seat which I was uh, privy to experience. So the seat also has to be very well adjusted in driving as well as in meditation. Then when you went to Shlok 12, Bhagwan said, concentrate your mind. Concentrate your mind. 
or the practice of meditation. Now, when you are driving also, where should you be concentrating? On the driving, not on the girlfriend sitting next to you or on uh, some body passing by on the road. Concentrate. Apna driving ke upar dhyan rakho. Then how should your posture be? Shlok 13. Trunk, head, neck, straight line. Right? So, while driving also, good posture. When you become expert in driving, your posture sometimes goes hand on the window sill. Right? Sometimes it goes like this also. <laughs> but while driving, even after you have become expert in driving, I think your posture should be like that only. Head, neck, leg, back straight line. And Simi noticed one thing, you know, when she was sitting in our car. She said, your driver, he sits like this. <laughs> His elbows are straight. He never bends his elbows. Was he a bus driver? <laughs> so the elbows should be relaxed. And what? 10 to 10? 10. 10, 10. Okay, 10, 10. 10, 20. 10, 20. Okay, whatever. But there should be some norm. There should be some rule. Not just like... So, good posture. Go to 13 again. Gaze, firm and fixed. Gaze, Firm and fixed while driving, eyes on the road, not here, not there. See, same thing when you are doing dhyan and when you are learning to drive, same things are applying. Go to 14 shlok, vow of chastity and fearlessness, fearlessness. To drive on the streets of Mumbai, you have to be fearless, otherwise no chance of moving out of your compound only. Right? So fearlessness comes there. <coughs> Shlok 14, be perfectly calm. Perfectly calm. Don't panic. Don't panic. Scooter a gaya beech mein. Pedestrian a gaya. Gai a gai. Bhais a gaya. All things are possible. Bullock cut a gaya. All things are possible. Don't panic. Same thing in your mind also. Bullock carts will come, guys will come, girls also will come. All kinds of things will come in the mind. Be perfectly calm. Shlok 16. Don't overeat before meditating. And don't also go completely on a fast. So when you are learning driving, please don't go with a bumper stomach full of food. Or you will be, what? Falling asleep at the wheel. And if you are completely fasting, hunger, your mind is going on gargat in the stomach rather than on the road. Don't oversleep and don't stay unnecessarily awake. Same thing, be fresh, <coughs> have good rest, otherwise you will feel drowsy, sleepy, water. And Shlok 17, last instruction comes, balance your work and your rest. Recreation and work. Right? He said that. Remember? So here also, balance yourself while you are driving also. Don't be too tired. <coughs> be fresh. Be in that state of mind where you can be good on the road, good in meditation. Now all these things are the technical instructions given to us for meditating. From Shlok 10, to shlok 17. Then 18 to 22. After I learn to do all these things. What will be my state? What will be my state of mind? What will what will I be experiencing? Or we can say. What will be the benefit of following so many instructions? So he says. Your mind will be thoroughly disciplined. He says. All your yearnings will no longer trouble you. Now we are not talking about driving anymore. We are talking only about meditation. So you will be free from yearnings. You will be completely tranquil. Your intellect, your buddhi will become purified. And you will feel a joy which is translated in this, uh, in this particular uh, book as super sensuous joy. <clears throat> that means a joy 
which is not experienced by the senses super sensuous meaning <coughs> not a joy which is available through the senses it's a joy from within and because of that you will now be established in the truth what truth aham um, brahmasmi you will be established in the truth and when you are established in the truth bhagwan says there will be no more sorrow there will be no more sorrow no more dukh and you will experience this joy greater than any other joy that you have ever experienced or that you will ever experience no greater gain is what bhagwan called it so that is where we stopped up till shlok 22 18 to 22 gives us these benefits or the state of mind after accomplishing or mastering the techniques given from 10 to 17 so today we start with shlok 23 <coughs> shall we chant it or maybe you all will have to chant it i don't know tam vidya dukh sanyoga वियोगं योग सीतन योक्त योगो निर्भिन्न चेतसा रीड विथ मी द ट्रांसलेशन दैट स्टेट कॉल योग विच इज फ्री फ्रॉम द कॉन्टैक्ट ऑफ सॉरो इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ट्रांस माइग्रेशन शुड बी नोन Nay, hey, this yoga should be resolutely practiced with an unwearied mind. <clears throat> Take the translation. First, let's see the word vidyal. Vidyal, leave it. It's okay, Tanush. Vidyal. Vidyal means it should be known. It is un. It is not in the word, but it is understood. vidya should be known or it should be known tam that very beautiful word here dukh sanyog viyog the state where one is free from all contact of sorrow the state where one is free from all contact of sorrow then there's the word yoga sangitam is called yog is called yog so if i want to rephrase that line it should be known that the state where one is free from all contact of sorrow that state is called yog Clear? Then we go ahead. Sir, yoga, that yoga, yoga vya should be practiced nishchayen resolutely. nishchayen should be practiced resolutely a nirvinna chetasa with an unwearied mind so up till now we have learned that if we practice all those different techniques we will be free from sorrow dukh will go away we will be free from sorrow we will have the greatest gain but still the human mind will have doubts really is it really going to be so have you experienced it is it known is it proved what is the proof so doubts will creep in and whenever doubt creeps in your spiritual progress gets delayed because doubt sunshine is like rust it erodes 
it erodes your practice it erodes your sadhana also any sadhana done with doubt has no effect <coughs> so bhagwan must have seen maybe on arjun's face some little doubt creeping in or he obviously knows that people will feel like that so he is giving some more advice in this shloka so he says when you practice all these things a nirvinna chetasa do it with an unwearied mind what is the way you should practice unwearied so this needs a lot of time lot of preparation lot of practice lot of effort bhagwan is saying don't get tired don't give up because the process is taking so long don't give up and the same thing happens for us let's say beginning of the year some of you may have taken sankalp i will go on diet i will do exercise every day then you start the practice then after some time what happens you get a wearied mind what is that wearied mind you get bored रोज खाखरा खाने का एवरी डे आई हैव टू ईट द सेम फूड लाइक यू आर फील यूर ऑल्सो एवरी टाइम क्या ढोकला खाने का आई हैव कॉट लॉट ऑफ कंप्लेन्ट्स एवरी टाइम ढोकला ढोकला सो वी गेट बॉड रिपीटिंग द सेम थिंग इन साधना ऑल्सो वी गेट बॉड डूइंग द रोज करने का पूजा एवरी डे पार्ट every day japa every day bored mind is chanchal it doesn't like it wants variety so that makes the mind wearied bhagwan is saying practice with an unwearied mind so one is you will get bored second you may get frustrated every day going to the gym not even 1 kilo has come down every day i am eating without ghee wala chapati what is this weight is not coming down every day i am doing this frustration not seeing visible results right hota hai hota hai na or it may be that you are disappointed because i am sitting in meditation i have not got any flash of lightning i don't see blue light green light purple light whatever they say in youtube god knows what all they say i am getting frustrated i am not disappointed i am dejected i am going to give this up Yes, or you just may give it up out of pure laziness. कौन करेगा ये सब? Or you may think, I don't need this anymore. So all these things make the mind wearied. And Bhagwan is saying, practice with an unwearied mind. <coughs> don't give up your practice, whatever it is. that famous example we always use is that the bamboo tree when you plant the bamboo for 6 years nothing comes out of the earth it needs a lot of i don't know whether it is true i'm not an agriculturist but i have heard that you the bamboo takes long time to sprout but does it mean that before it has come out of the earth nothing was going on below the earth <coughs> something was going on then only after that it became a visible result so your dhyan your sadhana your jap your paath your puja your witnessing your glad acceptance all the sadhana which we are doing there are subtle changes happening in the antakaran the purification process is a gradual one so even though you may may still have bursts of anger even though you may still get impatient even though you may still not always practice the triple filter test ek baar to hua do baar to hua kabhi to hua so there is some progress always there is some progress so don't give up even if you don't see any grand result are abhi tak moksh nahi mila forget it are aisa thode milta hai you know uh, so Bhagwan says, "Sir, nishchayen yogta vyo yoga. This yoga means this practice must be practiced resolutely. Resolutely, make a resolve that I am going to do this. 
Resolve means what? Firm conviction. How to make the resolve? How will the resolve happen? Nishtha. From where that Nishtha will come? You have to have a firm belief in the teachings of the Shastras. If you have a doubt in the teachings of the Shastras, you will never be able to practice resolutely. And second, you have to have a firm conviction that the mark, the path that the Guru is showing to you is the path that will take me to my goal. There also if there is sunshine, there also if there is doubt, there also if you are exploring this path also and that path also and X and Y and Z, you will be just bhatkoing in a maze. You will be bhatkoing. But see, to reach anywhere you have to take one path and reach the end. If you go on changing the path here and there, how will you reach the end? It's not possible. So there must be nishtha in the teachings of the Shastras and in the mark that the Guru is showing you. But it takes so long and to have that determination and that resolve to keep going. For that, the Shastras give us one simple story. I'll tell you that story. <coughs> There's a small little bird and the bird wants to lay <coughs> her eggs in the nest. So she finds a tree, a very nice looking tree. She says, I'll choose this tree. It is very close to the seashore. It will be comfortable. It will be cool. It will be nice shady tree also. And so near the ocean, she finds a tree and she makes a nest. And in that nest, she lays her eggs. Now one fine day, there's a huge wave that comes from the ocean. Almost like a tsunami, you can say, but not a tsunami. Regular wave. And because of that wave, the nest gets toppled and the eggs get washed away. So when the eggs get washed away, the bird gets angry. The ocean has taken my eggs. So I will take revenge on the ocean. So what revenge she thinks of, a small little bird. She says, I will make sure that there is no water left in the ocean. Hmm? So, the small little bird with a small little beak, a big drop of water she lifts and she puts it on the shore. One, one drop of water and she puts it on the shore. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine how, uh, how long that is going to take for her to empty the ocean. All the other birds say, give it up, you know. It's no point, your, your, you know, your whole life will go and you are not going to be able to empty the ocean. No, I have taken sankalp, I have taken a resolve, I am going to empty the ocean. <coughs> <coughs> Just then, Narad passes by. And Narad says, what are you doing? So she explains. He takes pity on that poor bird and says, you know, this little effort that you are doing, you are not going to be able to empty the ocean. So what he does, he calls Garud. And he tells Garud, you have got big wings, flap them so hard that with the flapping of your wings, the ocean will dry up. Okay. So that, that Garud also comes and tries to do all that. Now from this simple we don't know whether the ocean dried up or not. We don't know whether she got her eggs back or not. But the moral of the story or the teaching of the story is that if your resolve is pakka, then the universe will send you help in any form to help you to achieve your goal. Narad passing by and Garud coming help that little bird to do whatever she had put her resolve to do. So doesn't matter how long it takes, doesn't matter whether you are seeing results or not, whether it is in meditation, dieting, weight loss, getting a marks in your exam or whatever it may be. When you make the goal, don't give up. So you have to keep practicing. Now the thing comes, okay, I have to make a resolve, 
my mind should not be wearied, I should not give up in the middle way, I must continue my practice. But what is the practice that I have to continue? That is what the shloka is going to tell us. What is the practice? <coughs> the practice comes in the word Dukh Sanyog Vyog. Dukh Sanyog Vyog. Very nice. Dukh, you know what it means? Sorrow, grief, trouble. Dukh. Common word. Sanyog. Sanyog means what? Connection. Contact with. So we have, and Vyog means what? Opposite of Sanyog. Separation. So the separation of our connection with Dukkha. What is the practice we have to do? We have to do the Vyog separation of our Sanyog, of our connection with Dukkha. So two opposite words are being used. You understand? Dukh ka jo sanyog hai, connection hai, uska hamko viyog karna hai. We have to make it separate ourselves from the connection with Dukh. Hmm? So what is this connection that we have with Dukh? Let us see all the experiences that we have in a lifetime. All these experiences are happening because of contact, sanyog, between our antakaran and the objects of sansar. All our experiences, seer, seen, and the experience of seeing. Triputi we talked about. I don't know where we talked about it, but we have talked about Triputi. So, there is a seer, eyes are seen. There is an object which is being seen. And then there's the experience that is happening between these two. So these three things have to be there for all experiences. <coughs> now with every experience that we have within these three, the parinam, the result could either be happiness or unhappiness. Yes or no? Either you will feel happiness with your contact with the object or you will feel Unhappiness, there is, only, there, are, there is no middle ground. Either you will be happy or you will be unhappy. So when we go get into contact with something we like, we get something that we like, we feel happy. Sukh. And when that thing is taken away from us, we feel unhappy or we feel dukh. We, that we have all experienced. So from the time we are born, we are continuously experiencing this opposites of Sukh and Dukh. The time the newborn baby is in the arms of the mother, in the embrace of the mother, the newborn baby feels Sukh. And the minute that baby is separated from the mother, she cries. The Sukh is with the newborn and the Dukh of separation from the mother is also in the newborn. It is also in the mother. While the child is sleeping nicely in your arms, you are feeling sook. And you feel the child has gone to sleep at last. <laughs> then you put the child down. And the minute you put the child down, what do you hear? <laughs> Man, duk. Not only in the child, but also in the mother. Again, she has to pick up the child. Yes or no, all mothers must have experience. So from the time of birth, you are seeing suk and duk. Now that child, when it is fed, when it is cleaned, suk. When it is hungry, duk. Well, again. And this goes on right through our entire adult life. When we are with friends who like us, who enjoy our company, whose company we enjoy, who love us, who we love, Sukh. Separate from that, Dukh. And it's not just people, it is objects also. What we like, we feel Sukh. But it doesn't last forever, right? At some time, you are going to be separated from that. So that will automatically end in Dukh. But the good part is, none of this is permanent. Neither is Sukh permanent. 
nor dukh permanent. They don't last forever. The dukh is inherent in the sukh. Even while experiencing the sukh, there is dukh of will it finish? Will I ever feel this again? Somebody else has a bigger thing than I have got. Someone has a better thing, jealousy. So dukh is inherent even in the sukh. So do you feel this dukh with all objects? Do you feel this dukh with all objects that you experience? <coughs> Think about it. Yes. All objects? Some. Do you feel? Correct. Yes. You will feel this dukh only when you are having the experience with an object to which you are attached. <coughs> if you are detached, no, if you are separated, not the word detached, if you are separated from your child, you will feel dukh. If you are separated from the lift man, <laughs> there is no correction, there is no love loss. So you are not going to feel any dukh there. So the dukh is not in the object. The sukh also is not in the object. The dukh is where? The dukh is in your attachment to the object. So, we can call that experience where you are attached to an object and your separation from that object is causing you dukkh, we can call that a dukkh contact. You can give it a name. This, this is a dukkh contact because when I will get separated from this, I will get dukkh. Contact with this object is a dukkh object because if I am separated from it, I will feel dukkh. <coughs> Everyone wants sukh. Everyone wants happiness. Nobody <coughs> wants the dukh, isn't it? So therefore, if you no longer want dukh, what you have to do? Break your dukh contact. You have to break your dukh contact means I have to break my attachment to the vishai which will give me dukkh if I am separated from it. Samaj gaya? So the, yeah? If the mother is there who loves her child, then how can she just detach or not be attached to the child? That we'll discuss, you remind. keep this question for later. We'll, all the questions you keep for later, we will, I will answer. There's a chain of thought will get, uh, broken. So therefore, the practice that we don't have to give up. Remember, we are come, coming back to that. The practice that we have to keep doing with an unwearied mind, with a resolve. What is that practice? That practice is breaking the dukh contact with the material world. Breaking the dukh contact with the material world. Breaking our attachment to the objects. Sa nishchayen yogta vyo yoga nirvinna chetasa means when you will be able to break your attachment with the objects of sansar which give you dukkha at the time of separation, what will happen? Heart will become free from sorrow. The word is a nirvinna chetaha. Your heart will become free from sorrow. Means you will no longer feel any dukkh because your attachment has been severed. <coughs> so this one shlok is giving us two lessons. One is don't give up. Don't give up your practice. Whatever happens, frustrated, bored, 
uh, tired, anything. Don't give up. And two, what should I not give up? I should not give up the practice of breaking my attachment to the objects of sansar. Why? Because they are causing me dukh. Simple. Anyone is giving you dukh, will you go and say, Ah, bell, mujhe maar? No. So in the same way, if something is giving you dukh, why do you want to be attached to it? Hmm? But it's not that easy, is it? Therefore, Bhagwan doesn't stop there. He gives some more advice. Let's go to Shlok 24. Sankalpa prabhava kamam tyaktva sarvan sheshata manasai vendriya gramam vimiyam ya samantata Read with me. Completely renouncing all desires arising from sankalps thoughts of worldly desires and fully restraining all the senses from all sides by the mind to be continued. Okay? To be continued. Bhagavan says, I'll not tell everything to you in one shloka. Slowly, slowly. Otherwise, you'll get scared, run away. Tyaktva. Tyaktva means by renouncing. A sheshataha completely. Shesh means remaining. A sheshata, nothing remaining, completely. Sarvan, all. Kama, desires. Sankalpa Prabhavan arising from the thoughts of the world. <coughs> so he is continuing from the previous shloka where he is telling you to break all the dukh contacts. How to break the dukh contacts? By completely renouncing all desires which are arising from the thoughts of the world. I'll explain, don't worry. Then it goes, Vini Yamya, second technique, by restraining Samantataha from all sides, by restraining from all sides, Indriya Gramam, all the organs, Manasaiva with the mind filled with vivek. Some two techniques are being given in this shloka of how to break your dukh contact. Everyone wants to not have dukh, right? But we have kind of taken it for granted that Dukh is a part and parcel of life. It is not necessarily so. It need not be that Dukh is compulsory to be felt. Simple definition my Guruji has given me is if you don't want Dukh, don't run after Sukh. Simple. But that is also not easy to do. Right? Because we want so, we don't want to. But they both come like two faces of a coin. You cannot have only one face and not have the other face. So how do we want to live our life is what we have to think about. When we, when we do some manan, when we do some vichar, we need to see these very basic things. How do we want to live our life? And we have two options. Either we can live our life spiritually or we can live our life materially. Two options are there. <coughs> Let's go to Shloka 25. 
let us see how to live our life spiritually. What does it mean to live a life spiritually? Actually, it is the simplest way to live your life. You may think it's the most difficult way, but it is the most simple way. Because you only need one thing, and that is full faith. If you want to live your life spiritually, you should have complete Shraddha. In what? In the Supreme Being. That's it. Supreme Being. Have the Shraddha in the Supreme Being. However you want to call that Supreme Being. There should be no doubt in our mind that the Supreme Being is Sarva Vyapak. There should be Sarva Vyapak means all pervasive. There is no place where this Supreme Being is not there. This Supreme Being is complete, Purna. That should be the faith. This Supreme Being is omnipresent, omnipotent, omnisentient. Means there is nothing that is not the Supreme Being. If you have that Shraddha, if you have that Nishtha, that means your life is going along the spiritual way of living. What is the benefit of that? The benefit of that is contentment. And why will it give you contentment? Because you will have faith that whatever you really need will be provided for you. When you were born, you were provided a roof. When you were born, you are, could not, you did not have teeth. Food was provided in a way that you did not need teeth to eat it. <coughs> Who made all this provision? Who makes provision for the bees to get pollen and honey from the flowers? Who makes that provision for the fish who are in a full ocean with full of water? There also it can breathe, there also it can eat. Who is making this provision? If they, Bhagwan can make provision for bees and birds and fish and animals and snakes and live under the ground and under the water and all that, not make provision for you and me, his own children, his own creation. <coughs> so the universe will provide for us according to the laws of the universe. That faith also you should have. Not he will provide for us because I want Lamborghini and I want villa at the side of the ocean and I want 10 kilos of gold for my daughter's wedding. No, he is not going to provide that. He will provide according to the laws of the universe. And the laws of the universe means what? What I deserve. What I have earned through my own actions. I will get that. And that's the faith that will allow you to accept that. Whatever is due to me will be provided. And that, in, that is the meaning actually of glad acceptance. I gladly accept that I will get what is due to me that I have earned through my actions. Not less also, not more also. <coughs> so in a spiritual way of living, you are living in the flow of the universe. And therefore you will be content because it's your faith. And if you are content, it means you are already happy. Because you are, you know, I mean, you don't have any doubt about it. That will give you happiness. You'll already be happy. In spiritual life, way of living, you'll be happy. Let us see materially then. What is the difference? In the material, when we choose a material way of living, we feel that we need many things, right? 
So when you need many things, you have to do some many actions. You have to do some effort. When you do the effort, you will get the things. And when you will get those things, you will be happy. So it is about doing to get to be. So you do this. People have long to-do lists. I have to do this also, I have to do this also, I have to do this also. It makes you very content. The, the longer your to-do list is, the more discontent because you see the impossibility almost of doing 101 things. But you feel, kya karega? Mera karna padega? Kaun bola? Who told you kaun karna padega? According to whom? You have made the desire to get something, to have something. Therefore, you are working. And we are so chalak. I have to do for my family. I have to do for my children. As the child asks you to do, you want for your child. You want. You want to leave that portly bank balance, right? So the child has not asked you to do. Child may not want it also. Child may say, I just want to be an artist. I don't need, I don't mind. No, doctor bano, engineer bano, ye bano, wo bano. It is your desire. It is your desire. So we have to be clear about that. Now the thing is, we have all these desires for our child because we love them and we want the best for them and they are not in a position to decide what is the best for them. So in our opinion, we have decided this is the best for you. Better you have to work hard and for you to work hard, I also have to work hard and so I also have to do all these things and when I will do it and make so much money and send it to the college and then you'll get a job, then you'll get married, then you'll get a grandchild for me, then I'll be happy. You'll be happy? No, because then you have to look after the grandchild also. And do you think that once your desire is fulfilled, no other desire will come? Because then now, son is married, his wife has to also live, then wife and son and child also has to live, then second child also has to come, then second child also ka ghar, bigger ghar, bigger gadi, this thing, that thing, six seater car, seven seater car, second car, Desires never end. The desires will keep growing. So you will have to keep doing to keep getting to finally hopefully be happy. In other words, living a material way of life, you are postponing your happiness. That's what you are doing. You are delaying your happiness. And when you are delaying your happiness means you are not happy yet. Yet. Or you are happy but you want to be happy. Err. So for the err you have to work harder. Right? So if you are not happy then you are dukhi. <coughs> Therefore contact with material world and attachment causes dukh. QED. So the focus of living a spiritual life is you are in the flow of the universe. And the focus of living a material life is keep doing actions, to keep getting things in the hope of being happy one fine day. By that time, which is that day, we don't know. The last day of your life does not come announced. Does it? So we are continuously postponing our sukh or shall I say we are continuously postponing our anand. Yet we choose to live the material life. Are we not living material life? We are. Yet we are living the material life in spite of not Finding the happiness right here, right now, which is your birthright, which is who you are, 
विच इज योर एसेंस सत चित आनंद दैट इज योर स्वरूप बट यू आर चोजन टू लिव अ वे वेर यू आर नॉट परस्यूइंग दैट परस्यूइंग वॉट self realization i am anand <coughs> so why have we chosen to live the material way of life rather than the spiritual way of life and here i find it the most beautiful explanation we have given a value or we have given a worth to the material objects which the material objects are not worthy of we have superimposed now we are coming back to superimpose which we have studied in some other class we are superimposing a false sense of value on an object of the world now if i say <coughs> Okay, I don't know. What is the what would be a cost of a remote control? Like, if I want to buy a new one, two hundred rupees. Okay, but I say this remote control is worth twenty crores. I am. What am I doing? I am superimposing a false <laughs> sense of worth on something which is not worthy of the value that I am giving it. is it clear is it understand you can understand that right so we have given this false sense of worth on all vishayas of the world out of our ignorance out of our ignorance let me explain if you take your child to the sea shore and the child Young child says, "I want to build a sand castle." So the child builds a lovely sand castle, and that sand castle has a lot of worth for the child because she has made it so beautifully, so elaborately, and decorated it from the shells and put some flag and this and that and beautiful. She's so proud, so sukhi with her sand castle, and one wave comes. and the whole sand castle gets destroyed what will the child do cry bitterly my sand castle my sand castle and what you will say what will you say to your child it's sand are it's just a sand castle why are you crying so much it's just made of sand you can always make another one bole shaili ko to bolegi bichal definitely right Why are you crying? Unnecessarily, you are crying. I am asking you that question. Why you are crying so bitterly over your sand castles? You have also given a false value, a false worth to your sand castles, and when they go away or they get separated from you so much dukh so much crying so much i am watching mahabharat now so so much pralap ta <laughs> pralap kyu kar rahe hain we do pralap when our sand castles our day dreams our dream worlds our dream associations our dream contacts which are actually sources of our dukh are separated from us we do pralap so all our life in the material world is based on a value that we have given it which it doesn't deserve is it clear so now what is this word sankalp that bhagwan has used in this shloka he says sankalp is thoughts which are arising out of desire sankalpa prabhavan kaman sankalp are thoughts which arise out of desire 
Sankal, you know when you do puja or havan, you take sankal, right? You put some durva and water and kya? Cha akshat and uh, flower and then the mantras are chanted and in your mind you say putra de do, this thing de do, shadi de do, ghar de do, job de do, ye de do, wo de do. So sankal you take is your power to choose your power to choose what we want to give value to in our life you are doing this big havan because you want something and you want something because you are valuing it otherwise why would you want it <coughs> and then <clears throat> with the mantras you make an intention to get it that is the meaning of sankal you choose to get something which you value and you make an intention to get that. So it's a desire and you have put a thought to that desire, sankal. So it's a deliberate choice. It's a deliberate choice. It's not randomly happening. It's a deliberate choice to attain something material, right? And that something material which you have chosen to get, you have put a worth on it. You have put a value on a worthless object. Why worthless? Because it's not going to last forever. It is there for a while. It will give you sukh for a while. And you know that after sukh comes dukh. So what is the worth of that? For a temporary sukh, we are paying an extremely costly price. Extremely costly price. So let us see how this thought, sankalp and all works. This is very interesting. So deep within us, there is in our antakaran something called vasanas. Vasanas are unfulfilled desires which have, we have brought from many previous lifetimes also. And those vasanas is the source of all our thoughts. Our thoughts are all arising from deep within that bed of sanskars. <coughs> from there, a thought energy arises. Vritti. <coughs> it arises and then where will it go? It will find some opening. What is the opening? Our five Gyan Indriyas. So it will find that opening and it will go out Bahir Mukhi into the world. There, depending on the color of your sanskar, meaning the guna of your sanskar, it will get attracted to the predominant guna which has colored the thought vritti and it will go and find those kind of vishayas. It will get attracted. See, we go out, even you go, take a simple example, you go to the mall, you do window shopping. Do you stop and stare at every window shop? Only the ones which you feel attracted to. So when you are feeling attracted to something, know that your attraction to that is because of that color of the sanskar which is coming out along with your vritti. Har, har object mein you have no ruchi. On some things you get really attracted. Right? So when you get really attracted, the attachment, the desire will come, I must possess it. Then the sankal, hona hi padega, intention, energy. And this is happening continuously throughout our waking state of consciousness. Continuous. And even in dream state. 
even in dream state you are dreaming of the things that are mostly you are attracted to during your waking state but because there is no logical flow that a object will come in some different form right but if you um, sometimes i love this mahabharat uh, uh, serial so after seeing for one hour one and a half hours here i am not satisfied and i go home and i see again <laughs> so that's why i want to have a full day mahabharat screening so i i go and, and in the night i watch then i see the duryodhan and this shakuni and all. i get nightmares in the night <laughs> because it is they are so powerfully evil so whatever experience you are having during your waking hours will dictate the kind of dream you have very important to keep your experiences satric so now what happens that vritti has come up it has emerged from your bed latent bed of vasanas impressions it is colored by your gunas it is going out from your gyan indriyas it is getting attracted to specific objects to which you have an affinity then your intention becomes there to get that object attachment happens and attachment happens means dukh contact therefore dukh is inevitable in every experience that we have in the waking hours so now this vasna and sankal they are the culprits of our dukh you would say that and if we were to remove the vasnas and the sankalps what would we experience anand because of our vasnas we take birth again and again what is the what is the reason of our repeated life life cycles of birth and death vasna because of vasna only we have to come back to earth therefore vasna creates sansar vasna creates sansar if vasna creates sansar which you agree with me if vasna creates sansar destruction of vasna creates moksha you want moksha here you are he bhagwan is telling you clearly so what is the definition of moksha the remedy of vasna no dukh no dukh so i have to break my attachment to sankalp i have to break my attachment to vasna how how so bhagwan in this shlok has given us those two techniques what are those sankalp prabhavan kaman tatva sarvan sheshata completely renouncing all desires arising from sankalp to fully restraining all the senses from all sense from all sides by the mind two things are there <coughs> one is renouncing all desires which are arising from sankar two restraining all senses which comes first are the senses going out first and then the sankalp is rising or first the sankalp came up and then the senses went out into the world ha huh. so first you have to cut the desire then you will be able to restrain the senses but what do we do we try to restrain the senses i will not eat gulab jamun i will not eat chocolate cake i will not drink i will not smoke 
I will not do this, I will not do that, I will restrain my senses. But you have not cut the desire. Without cutting the desire, it is an almost impossible task to restrain the senses. For a while you will be able to restrain. You will be able to build a dam. But if the power of the water coming from the mountain is too strong, the dam will break or it will overflow. Therefore, the power of the, the energy, the power of the desire has to be first cut. Then restraining of the sense, because something will, some leakage of the dam will be there, some leakage of the desire will be there, it will be easier to restrain the senses. First, completely renounce the desires. Then think of restraining the senses. But there are two words there. Completely and all. Completely renounce. All desires. So we are chalak. How shall I say? Mind is chalak. No, we try to fool ourselves. Tamasic desires I have, I have managed. I have cut out those tamasic desires. Little rajasic is left. Sattvic to is sattvic. What's the matter with sattvic desires? Sattvic is a good desire. Rajasic little tamasic gone. But Bhagavan is saying completely. <coughs> and all. Two words he's using. Double emphatic. All desires. Sattvic also at the final moment, even that desire of moksha will not be present at the moment of a paroksh anubhuti. That much faith, that much shraddha will be there that it will happen when it is the right time to happen. I don't have to run after it like the butterfly. You run after the butterfly, by the time you reach that leaf, it has gone to the next one. And what sankalps and what desires do I have to renounce? Of course, all material sank uh, vasanas of the material world. But people will say, I don't care much for all the, you know, ghar and gadi and this and jewelry and gold. I only want punia. I want punia. I am doing all this for punia. For what? Punya? Swarg. <laughs> That's also a desire. All desires. Not only of this loka, not only of swarga, but of all lokas. Don't, don't do it for getting some punya to go here, there, enjoy the luxurious vacation in swarg. Because after your punya is over, you'll get one kick and you'll be sent back here. You are not be allowed to stay for one second more in Swarg after your brownie points are over. Okay, then come back here and start with Chakki Pisoi from the beginning again. When all desires are completely renounced, then Sansar itself will get destroyed for you. And when Sansar is destroyed for you, what is left is Moksha. And this is not the first time Bhagwan is telling this to us. Bhagwan has already told this to us in the earlier uh, Adhyayas. And he will keep saying it till the 18th Adhyay also. So I want you to move your book to Adhyay 3. <coughs> Adhyay 3. Shlok 39. You will read with me. Huh? 39 and 40. We read the English. Got it? Arjun, knowledge stands covered by this eternal enemy of the wise known as desire, which is insatiable like fire. 
What is preventing knowledge from coming? Desire. 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 Same thing. Let's go ahead. The senses, the mind and the intellect are declared to be its seat. Whose seat? Desire seat. With the senses you perceive. With the mind you desire. And with the intellect you justify your desire. Covering the knowledge through these, it means desire, deludes the embodied soul. So you can see where you are stuck. You are stuck only because of your thought process which is getting colored by your latent desires. Going out into the world, getting attracted to the things which are unfulfilled within you getting attached there, dwelling on those objects and when that object is taken away from you or you don't get that object which you are attached to, you are finding Dukkha. <coughs> this is the life we are leading, material life. But it is not necessary you can move to the spiritual way of life where all you have to renounce is your doubt that the best is happening for you. Only thing you have to renounce is your <coughs> doubt. The only thing you need to develop is your faith. How difficult can that be? And now you already know what has caused the attachment. Do you know? What is it? I told you just now, five minutes ago. What has caused the attachment? False valuation. Huh? False valuation. False valuation. The attachment has happened because you have given a false worth, a false value to the object which is worthless in the long run. Worthless. So, understanding this Value is wrong is all you need to break the attachment. And with what equipment, tool or faculty will you be able to remove this false value that you have given to this remote control? Vivek. 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 That is why the first of your sadhana chatushtai is Vivek. Without Vivek, you cannot do anything. You cannot progress. So, what are the things we are attached to? Name, fame, wealth, right? Recognition, status. When we have given that a value, we have given that a worth and we are running after that. At what cost? At what cost? Think of that. You put it in one weighing scale. Value, name, fame, yash, aishwarya, this, that, on one, the tarazu. On the other side, eternal bliss, eternal anand. Which you want, you can choose. Nobody is telling you what to choose. But you should know what you are paying, the cost that you are paying for your name. The cost that you are paying for your fame. The cost that you are paying for your bank balance. The cost that you are paying for earning your endless crores of money or buying your endless tijoris full of gold. What is the cost? The cost is moksha. Right? <clears throat> and what is the cost of pandering to these vasanas? What is the cost of continuously feeding and encouraging your vasanas from growing and growing and growing? Because of the vasanas, you are coming again and again into the cycle of life and death. 
coming again and again into cycle of life and death means coming again and again into cycle of suk and duk suk and duk up and down pain and pleasure you want that put that in one scale and put moksha in the other then evaluate what you want what is the cost we we do this uh, for which share shall i buy this shares or that shares this investment or that investment this a car or that car this mileage and that mileage are you do this evaluation itna bank balance hona chahiye acha then when i was a uh, very young maybe oh just his age yeah approximately that time and i thought i asked my parents that question i said we are working so hard to get all these things and then i'm going to die so what's going to happen with all these things what what is the use that thought came to me as a teenager so what will happen why am i working so hard to get this degree and this thing and that thing and but of course at that time these questions of teenagers and young children we should be equipped to answer we don't have the answers i did not get an answer there the question remained and that was my search for what is the permanent thing that i need and what is the mark that one has to take not that studying is wrong <coughs> not that getting a job is wrong not that earning money is wrong all needed all essential don't mistake me don't don't think that i'm saying you don't need to study you don't need to get a job you don't need to earn money you will not be able to live but don't get attached to that don't do that at the cost of moksha at the cost of moksha let the two run parallelly one is vyavahar and one is adhyatma and the both should run on their own tracks don't mix the two don't mix the two okay and we get attached to everything that is priya to us and we don't weigh it against the shreya so whatever we are running after if we understand like we did in ashtavakra gita that all these vishayas are only wish when you see the vishayas as wish instead of seeing it as amrit then who will want to go and drink the wish it is a cause of your bondage it is not a cause of i am so rich so i am free i can buy whatever i want that is not your freedom that is your bondage <coughs> i am rich i am independent i can get this i can get that i can go to the newest restaurant i can buy the newest car i can buy the newest iphone i can buy this i can buy that this is not your freedom it's your bondage mm-hmm. right and then our attachment to people this person makes me feel complete this person makes me feel good this person makes me feel loved how they will make you complete they are also looking for completion that completeness comes from inside not from anyone outside so when that attachment to that person is there and you have yog of that person then duk then where is the completion happening so this realization has to dawn this realization has to dawn not because i am telling you i am telling you whatever i am saying today to you you are looking at me very seriously you are looking at me very gravely but when you go out you will forget it completely the minute the biscuits will be served it will be forgotten forget going outside 
ये बिस्किट अच्छा है यार फिनिश्ड खत्म इट्स ओवर सत्संग ओवर दिस रियलाइजेशन मस्ट कम फ्रॉम इनसाइड दैट थिंग अरे व्हाट एम आई डूइंग दैट दैट इज अ रियलाइजेशन इज इट दैट रियलाइजेशन कैन लीड टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन so this super imposition of a false value has to be removed when this super imposition has been removed i say are it is 200 rupees ka hai 2 crore ka nahi hai jaane do who wants it is it right then you will say jaane do no i don't need it then you don't have to work so hard to restrain your senses now you have to work hard to restrain your senses to crore ka hai ha फ्री में मिलता है ले लो बट आफ्टर यू नो दिस इज फॉल्स वैल्यू फॉल्स वैल्यू कौन अगेट इट आई डोंट नीड इट देन यू विल बी एबल टू नाउ भगवान सेज रिस्ट्रेन ऑल द सेंसेस फ्रॉम ऑल साइड्स सो आर सेंसेस आर गोइंग इन ऑल डिरेक्शन आईज आर गोइंग टू रूप फॉर्म इयर्स आर गोइंग टू शब्द साउंड nose is going towards gand smell skin is going towards sparsh touch tongue is going <coughs> tongue most active going towards ras taste right all see imagine a chariot with five horses and each horse is going because one horse is going to roop oh, chalo chalo nice looking girl another one is saying nice smell another one is saying nice taste another one is saying nice this nice that where will the chariot go that is why you are feeling completely crushed you don't you are confused this is dukh this is dukh this is the dukh not knowing where you are going not knowing what to give first shall i do this first or shall i get this first shall i do this first that first this is dukh this is not freedom this is dukh and the eyes will go get attached then the mind will start giving order to the organs of action jao move legs go <coughs> hands go pick up all this continuous movement in the bmi movement sthirta ka hai and what we are talking about meditation don't forget what we are talking about meditation we are not talking about a shopping spree we are talking about meditation in meditation this is what is needed don't forget that now your desires you have quelled because you have understood its worthlessness now your your vivek has moved to say hare you may have liked this roop before but uska koi value nahi hai after 15 years she look like your grandmother so so no need to run after this person after some time this mango which is tasting so sweet it will become sadela you run you understand what i am saying it will be so easy for your senses not to be so attached to the wish eyes because they contain wish okay. you can open that uh, third chapter na now now read shlok 41 what does it say therefore arjun see now the therefore already bhagwan has told us my lord my case i rest but after that we have forgotten from third adhyay to sixth adhyay also we have forgotten again therefore arjun you must control your senses and then kill this evil thing which obstructs gyan and vigya kill this evil thing who wants to be a murderer be a murderer of your vasnas 
That's what Bhagwan is saying. Be the murderer of your vasanas. Interesting? Yes. Want to go ahead? Yes. yes. Then let's do 25. Back to Adhyay 6, Shlok 25. Shane, Shane, Rupa, Rame, Bodhya, Driti, Grihi, Taya, Atma, Sansamana, Kritva, Na, Kinche, Dapi, Chintaye. He should, through gradual practice, attain tranquility and fixing the mind on God through reason controlled by steadfastness he should not think of anything else. <coughs> shane, shane slowly, slowly gradually, gradually dire, dire not suddenly shane, shane Uparamet, one should go within. Buddhya, with the intellect. One should go within, with the intellect. Dhriti Grihitaya, controlled by steadfastness. Kritva, making Manaha, the mind. Atma Sanstham, fixed in the self. Na chintayet, not thinking. Kinchit api, of anything else. So two techniques we learnt in the earlier thing. Cut the, renounce the desires, restrain the senses. First we have to cut the desires, then we have to restrain the senses. But we do the opposite. We try to restrain the senses without cutting the desires. Therefore it takes long. Therefore it is almost an impossible task. And therefore the process of self-realization gets prolonged more and more. It takes more and more time. And even if you were to do it in the right way, by first cutting the vasanas and then restraining the senses, cutting the vasanas is not an easy job. It is lifetimes of habit that you are trying to reverse. Therefore, it's going to take time. It's unreasonable <laughs> to even imagine that today you have heard this and you go home and immediately all your vasanas will get you know, renounced and all your senses will get restrained and by tomorrow morning 5 p.m. or 5 a.m. you will get a paroksh anubhuti. Not, not, forget, not imagine, not, it is impossible. It is impossible. So I should not say impossible. But Bhagavan says, shane shane. This process will take time. It has to be a gradual process. It doesn't have to be an erratic process. Thoda kiya, phir vacation a gaya to chhod diya. Phir thoda kiya, phir sasuma hai to usko chhod diya. Phir thoda kiya, phir usne bolaya party mein to chhod diya. E yatra mein gaya to chhod diya, e party mein gaya chhod diya. Not like that. Shane, shane. Continuously, slowly, slowly. And the speed that or the duration, the time that you will take to reach your goal depends on many factors. Depends on what? What would you say? What does it depend on? Wisdom. 
Exactly. The first thing is depends on your nishtha. Nishtha on the teachings. <coughs> nishtha in the goal. Nishtha in the guru. This nishtha is the key factor. But that's also not enough. You may have nishtha, but you don't have purusha. There is no self-effort. You have nishtha. Ah, oh, my guru is there. My guru will taro me. Are guru kya tarega? Guru ko bhi talme ka ye. You have to do your effort. Don't have any false delusion. That some people have, maybe they have that capacity. I don't have. I'll put one hand on you and you will simply get a paroksha. I, I don't have. I'm telling you clearly. Don't rely on me. Rely on yourself. I don't have any power. No power. Absolutely none. I can only talk. I can point. I can show. I can give my experience. Baki ka kaam you have to do. Your purushat. And three, Again, one more factor is there. How fast will you reach your goal? Now we are not talking about the time when, we are counting the time when you didn't know anything about Vedanta or spirituality. We are talking about from the time, let's say you started coming for satsang. From that time to the time you reach your goal, how much time is it going to take? Is it the same for everyone? <laughs> no. Nishtha is different. Purusharth is different. Also, your starting point is different. Somebody may still be in tamas. Somebody may be in rajas. Somebody may already be coming here established in sattva. It will depend on that. It will depend. All three factors will be. You want to climb uh, uh, the top of the mountain. Are you starting a journey from the bottom of the mountain or from the middle of the mountain or you almost reached the peak and you just have to do that last thing. And also it depends on how much you have done in your previous lifetime. Because those sadhanas will come with you in this lifetime. No effort is lost. If you have done all sadhanas and you have not attained self-realization in this world, no need to feel sad about it because on your next birth you will take birth in that kind of situation where you will in continue your sadhana from that moment onwards. This is what happens with you know avatars I can only say like Shankaracharya at age of 34 is already finished. People say, oh, where he did bhakti, where he did this, where he did that, where he did karma. Are he, oh, karke aaye hai. It's finished in the previous lifetime. Already chitta is shuddha. If you have done that, good for you. Then you will go fast. That you only know. That you will only know. I cannot tell. Okay. So, shane shane is the third technique. First is cut the vasna. Second is restrain the senses. Three is go gradually. Don't give self promotion, double promotion and all. Each stage of your sadhana has to be mastered. It has to be perfected. If you are in a hurry to go to advanced stages of sadhana, it will be like building this building in front na, without any foundation. It will topple. That's why some of the bridges they build, they topple over in the first time the cars start going. People are in a hurry because they give the excuse, we have a lot of mumukshutva, we are yearning to see God, so we are in a hurry, let, let me do everything fast. That is not mumukshutva, that is rajas, that is spiritual immaturity. Okay, so have your firm conviction. Your goal, you will 100% reach at the right time, in the right way, according to your Nishtha and Purusha. The ball is in your court. Then what will happen? Anything else I have to know? Bhagwan uses that word, Upparamet. Upparamet. Withdraw within. 
Do you remember Shat Sampati? Shama, Dhamma, Uparama. Shama is what? Restraint of mind. Dhamma is what? Restraint of senses. Uparama is what? Spontaneous withdrawal from sense objects. Shama, Dhamma require effort. Restraint. When the restraint, that is why, that is why you have to go step by step. Restraint with effort, the mind. Restraint with effort, the senses. Then spontaneously, those vishayas no longer have attraction to you. Because you have used your vivek to no longer superimpose a false value on those objects. How everything is connected. So automatically you will no longer feel attracted. That is Uparama. Spontaneous withdrawal from sense objects. <coughs> so what is this withdrawal process? Your organs. Yan Indriya and Karma Indriya. Ten organs are there. First they will withdraw into the mind. The mind will withdraw into the intellect. The intellect will then withdraw into Atma. And the Atma is the one that witnesses all these faculties. This also is in your third chapter. See, everything Bhagavan has to repeat again and again. Because you didn't get it in the third Adhyay. He's telling you again now. <coughs> Read 30, third chapter 42. Now you'll understand it better. The senses are said to be greater than the body. But greater than the senses is the mind. Greater than the mind is the intellect. And what is greater than the intellect is he, the self. So the five organs of perception and the five organs of action, they are superior to the gross body. Because they have a faculty. Cross body is jad. Like, I mean like it's just uh, bone and skin and they are not doing any actual function. So the gross body is inferior to the faculties of perception and action. But superior to the faculties of uh, perception and action is the mind. Because organs of perception are just collectors of experiences, just collecting and giving, they are couriers, whereas the mind has one more additional uh, function which is sankalpical, senses cannot do sankalpical, so mind is superior to the organs, right, then intellect has one more superior faculty which is vivek, discrimination, mind cannot decide, Mind can only do sankalpikal. Intellect has that capacity to say right or wrong. And when that capacity has been cleaned and cleared, the Atma reveals itself. The Atma is the highest. So that is what is saying over here also. So this is the process of going within. Where? In meditation. Come back always to what we are talking about. We are talking about the practice of meditation. And then finally, the next shloka, there only, 343, thus Arjun, knowing the self, which is higher than the intellect, subduing the mind by reason, kill this enemy in the form of desire that is hard to overcome. How many times he has to tell us? How many times? Same thing again and again. But a doubt can arise. Kill this desire. We are living in a material world. We are using material things. We need material things. Is it possible? Or if I try to kill this desire for this, then where will my mind go? Everywhere there is material world only. Where will the mind go? What will it do? Bhagavan is telling you. What is telling you? Atma Sanstam Manakritva. 
Take it out of the objects of the world. Fix the mind in the self. Fix the mind in the self. Here again, the words Sanyog Viyog of the earlier chapter, uh, uh, earlier shloka. Dukkha Sanyog Viyog we said, remember? So, very old Siva Sadhana is there. Who can remember which it is? Detach, attach. Don't detach without attaching. You will fall down. So you have to detach from the outside, attach inside. If you don't attach inside, you will be nowhere. And trying to attach inside without detaching outside, possible? Not possible. You will we'll be on the treadmill. Keep walking but you will not reach anywhere. आप लोग इतना जप करते हैं पाठ करते हैं पूजा करते हैं सत्संग करते हैं कर्तन करते हैं भक्ति करते हैं सब करते हैं वाई आर नॉट रीच यू आर अटैच यूर बट यू आर नॉट डिटैच फ्रॉम देर कैसे होगा इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गेट इन टू द बोट टू क्रॉस द रिवर यू हैव टू रिमूव बोथ द फीट फ्रॉम द शॉर ना You keep one foot on the bank of the shore and one foot in the boat. आपको पता है क्या होगा ना? So I'm not, you know, I have experience of this. I was a very small child, smaller than maybe Shaili, or maybe little smaller than Jainam maybe. And I gone with my family to Kodi Canal. See some memories they are so sharp. And uh, there's a lake there in Kodi Canal. So we were going in a big group, and one lady was there, slightly elderly, little heavy also, and uh, we were all going in a, for a boat ride. So she had one foot in the boat. <laughs> she was scared to lift the other foot from the from the shore land. Now you know, can just imagine what had happened. So like that, <laughs> you have to detach. Only after attaching, or you have to attach and definitely detach. Otherwise, you are neither here nor there. And if you have to climb a ladder, one foot up. Next foot, stay over there only. You cannot. If you stay over there, you'll be stuck. And if you leave out both the legs, you'll fall. <coughs> Hundreds of examples from practical life are there. It should not be difficult to understand adhyatmically what this means. Detach, attach, attach, detach. Both ways. Okay. Anything else, Bhagwan? Do I have to remember anything else? So much I have to remember to meditate, renounce my desires, restrain the senses, practice step by step, go gradually, withdraw my faculties, fix the mind and the self. He says, Na kinchatapi chintayet. Don't think of anything else. Don't think of anything else. And you know when you meditate, how many things come in the mind. Mind ka job is only that. Jump like a chanchal monkey from thought to thought. With practice, that is why resolute practice, shane shane, practice, practice is not easy. I don't want to fool you that it is easy. It's not easy. <coughs> but if you do it, if you stay, don't give up. Do shane shane. Master each step before you try to go to the next step. Then what will happen? Slowly, slowly, slowly. The mind will learn. You you have no idea how receptive the mind is to your instruction. You can train the mind just by giving strict instructions. Stop. It will stop. But we are not strict. How strict we are when the child tries to put her hand inside a live plug. We don't say, baby, come, don't do like that. We'll just jump and 
pull her away from that plug. Like that. Pull your mind. Restrain it. Put the lagam. And you tell your mind in no uncertain terms. I don't want to think of this. I don't want to think of that. I am thinking of the self. I am thinking of the supreme being. I am established in the self. Don't let any intruder come into your We don't let any intruder come into our house. Why we let intruders come into our mind? Like that. Huh? Be little savdhan. When that happens, you will experience savikalp samadhi first. And after savikalp samadhi, you will go into nirvikalp samadhi. Then what will be? What will be the result? Aparoksh, anubhuti, moksha. Freedom from sorrow. Freedom from sorrow is moksha. Anything more, Bhagwan? Do I need to know anything more? Yes. I'll tell you next time. Not today. Enough. Already too much. Okay. Now you put everything away and let us put this inside our minds. Settle down comfortably. You don't need your books, you don't need anything. Close your eyes. Calm your breathing. You don't have to do anything, just be open to what I say and allow it to go into your mind. Attachments to vishes of the world cause duk. <coughs> Sadhana's help to break the duk contact with the material world. Duk, Sanyog, Fiyog. Choose to live spiritually. Living spiritually is being in the flow of the universe with full faith. Have nishtha in the omnipotence of Brahma and the laws of the universe. Do not postpone your happiness by getting attached to a material way of living.
you no longer superimpose a false notion of worth on temporary sukhs. You are using your vivek to renounce all desires completely that bind you to sansar. Moksha. Moksha is the eradication of all dukhs and dukh contacts. Master each step of every sadhana, shane shane, gradually, and build a strong foundation of your practice. Uparame. Learn to withdraw and merge. Cross body merges into senses. Feel it right now. Merge senses into your mind. Withdraw. Withdraw the moving mind into the still intellect. Experience Stirta. With the clear intellect, experience Atma. Your true, complete nature. Atma. Pure consciousness. Pure awareness. Witness existence itself knowledge itself bliss itself Sat Chit I am Sat, I am Chit, I am Anand.
ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ